Hey, so I thought I'd do a quick review of the Orient Ray 2. Uh, so my one is obviously the one with the blue dial um, and bezel. Yeah, I've had mine for about a year or two now. Um, got it from America, it was about 350 Australian. Um, took a while to get here. Um, yeah, and I thought I'd give a kind of rundown on how it's been. Um, so it seems like everything's kind of made of stainless steel. Um, it's got a Japanese Seiko movement, um, 22 joule uh, movement. It's not very accurate, the movement. It loses time um, fairly consistently, um, which isn't a good thing. Um, but yeah, as for the design, I'm a big fan yeah, it looks very similar to the Submariner, which I'm a big fan of. I kind of like the, the homages there. Um, it's a day date, so it's got the little window. Um, it's got a... So, the crown is a screw in. Um, so you can unscrew it to wind it. You can hand wind it or just... Um, it's automatic. Um, take it one click out to change the time and date and then two clicks out to change the day and date and then two clicks out to change the time. It is uh, hacking, so the um, second hand stops um, when you take the, when you pull it fully out, which is a nice feature. Um, doesn't have sapphire um, crystal as the, uh, whatever it's called, it's got glass, um, which, you know, I've got no scratches on it so far, so um, um, no complaints there. Would prefer it sapphire, obviously. Uh, I've got a few scratches on the bezel, uh, which is to be expected after two years. Um, some on the case as well, but you can't really see it because it's stainless, uh, stainless steel. The uh, strap width is 22 mil, um, so it's really easy to change out with a nice leather strap or a NATO strap or whatever you want. Um, I think they look fantastic. Um, as for the the links, they're kind of your classic, um, let's have a look, your classic style links with the, you know, pop the tool in there and poke them out. Um, some of them are really tight and really tough to get out. Um, they don't want to budge. The rest are kind of normal. Um, yeah, it's a really nice, really nice bracelet um, for a standard uh, bracelet. Um, yeah, the loom is, it's actually really good. Um, just doesn't last long at all. Uh, you, won't, you won't get any kind of effective loom over even 20 minutes, I'd say, um, which is pretty poor. But kind of if you're just changing from light to dark room, um, it's it's actually really good. I'm quite impressed with it. It's even got a little uh, loom on the... Um, it is a diving watch, so the bezel is functional. But yeah, it's got a little loom on the little dot thing there, which is quite nice. Um, yeah, I, I... So obviously I don't dive because I'm not good at sport, but... Um, the, I use the um, the bezel to tie my brakes at work, so I guess that's similar to diving in no way whatsoever. So you kind of just pop the line up that dot with the minute hand, um, and then once you get there, it's been your 15 minute breaks up, bud, back to work. Um, yeah, so quite like it. Um, yeah, it's a uh, in my opinion, it's one of the best entry-level automatic watches. Uh, 350 bucks. It's quite a lot of money. Um, if I was going to choose a different watch around the same price, I'd probably go the Tissot uh, Viso Date. Um, I'm just a really big fan of them. Um, this one doesn't come with the uh, kind of X-ray back. Um, I don't like that, so I quite like this. 
how it doesn't have that. Um, yeah, I guess the my only criticisms are the uh, it's not sapphire crystal and the movement's pretty crap. But uh, yeah, there you go.